Now let's move on to the statement of stockholders equity. So we're still following this same firm and what we're doing with this statement is trying to figure out why the stockholders equity changed from year over year. Now remember we've already looked at the balance sheet and we've looked at the income statement. On the balance sheet we found out that they reduced retained earnings and on the income statement we saw that it was because they had negative mm -hmm. income or negative earnings. So what we're seeing here is that the number of shares and the value of the common stock, um, the book value of the common stock did not change and we knew that already from the balance sheet and from the additional data that we were given. But here's the breakdown of what happened in retained earnings. We knew already from the balance sheet that the balance in retained earnings in 2013 was over $200,000 and in 2014 it ended at just over $30,000. So what happened was the $160,176 loss from the income statement got closed out to retained earnings at the end of the year and then remember they still paid a dividend. It was lower but they paid an $11,000 dividend so that too had to come out of retained earnings because remember dividends are a way that firms distribute earnings to shareholders. If there are no earnings and you still want to pay a dividend, it has to come out of retained earnings. So the 2013 balance less the 2014 loss less the 2014 dividend payments give us the 2014 retained earnings balance. Similarly, the total stockholders equity is going to change by the amount of the net income and cash dividends combined. So now let's go on and, and wrap up the statements with this last statement, the statement of cash flows. And so this statement is going to have three sections where it is kind of following cash through the firm. So the first section is operating activities. So we're starting with that, that net loss um, from net income and then we're adding and subtracting off anything that uh, was a source or a use of cash relative to operating activities. So depreciation and, and amortization are non-cash expenses, so we get to add the, that amount back. Um, an increase in accounts payable means that they're using less cash and more credit, so we get to add that increase to the operating activities section. An increase in accruals is similar to accounts payable, so that's also meaning that they're, they're using less cash. So that's get, that gets added. But on the asset side, if you increase accounts receivable, that means you're receiving less cash. So that's going to be a decrease in cash from operating activities. And the same with increase in inventory. You have to pay for that, and so that's going to cost you more cash. So the net cash from operating activities just sums up all of those items. So now the second and third sections are long-term investing and financing. With investing, we're showing how cash was spent on property, plant, and equipment. And so they spent quite a bit. And remember, they were going through an expansion. So they spent over $700,000 on property, plant, and equipment. And then how did they pay for all this stuff? Well, they increased their debt. So they had to increase their notes payable by over $400,000 and then their long-term debt by another $400,000. And then the dividends that they pay actually are classified as financing activities because remember that's a distribution to shareholders and shareholders are a source of financing. So we sum all of that and um, we see that they they had a cash inflow from financing of over $800,000 to cover those cash outflows for um, property plan and equipment and um, the outflow for operating activities. So when we sum those three sections, um, that gives us the net decrease in cash of $50,000. If we add that to the cash at the beginning of the year, that will give us the cash at the end of the year. So what conclusions can we draw about this company based on those four financial statements? Well, as we already said, their net cash from, um, or actually conclusions that we're drawing from the statement of cash flows. 
we we know that their net cash from operations is negative. So their operations are kind of bleeding cash. And that's mainly because they're starting off with negative net income. And then another big one we saw is that they borrowed $800,000 or over $800,000 to meet those cash requirements. And not listed here, I would say that they, it's um, a big revelation that they spent $700,000 or a little over that on um, investing in property plan and equipment. So even after borrowing, their cash account dropped by $50,000. So they had significant borrowing, but they still ended up having a decrease in cash. So the question we have to ask then is, was this expansion good for the company? Did it create additional after-tax operating income? So after-tax operating income would be the EBIT, earnings before interest in taxes, times one minus the tax rate. So our EBIT was negative um, in 2014, and we've got a 40% tax rate, and so we're getting an after-tax operating income of negative 78,000. But in 2013, we had after-tax operating income of positive 114,000. I think we already knew the answer that the expansion did not create additional income. Another question, what effect did the expansion have on net operating working capital? So in, with net operating working capital, we're taking current assets minus liabilities, excluding notes payable. So um, in 2014, if we plug all the numbers in from the financial statements, we see that net operating working capital was 913,000. Um, and in 13, 2013, it was 842,000. So yes, the expansion did increase, or that was the effect of the expansion on net operating working capital. It increased net operating working capital because of, um, well, we'll get into the specific details later, but as we work through this formula, you can see where those changes came from. So now let's look at the bigger picture what effect did the expansion have on overall operations? Well, looking at the kind of key line items, sales increased. That's always a good thing if you can support it, but that tends to be a good thing. Um, after tax operating income we just talked about decreased. Net mm -hmm. operating working capital increased. Um, and net income decreased. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Some things went up and some things went down.